So when I look at my results here, there are a few things that are immediately on this page. The first one is obviously the title. And you'll notice these are numbered, one, two, three, and for each of them there are titles with links to the article. Below that is a description of the source type. This is an academic journal article, which makes sense since that is what I listed in my filters over here on the left. Then I get some basic information about the article, such as the author, publication year, the journal it was published in, pages, etc. Below that I get subjects. So these are subject terms that can be found within the article, as in this is what the article discusses. Some of these subjects I selected in my filters, and so that's why they are bolded. The other subjects are subjects that are included in the article, but I did not necessarily select in my filters. So even though I did not select military surveillance, this article does address military surveillance within it. Then below that, I have two links, an HTML full text and PDF full text. Both of these give you access to the article. The only difference between the two is what they look like, and I'll show you in a second. The other thing you'll notice over here on the right-hand side is a sheet of paper with a magnifying glass over it. When you hover over this icon, a little pop-up box will appear that gives you some of the more uh, general or basic information about this article, some of which we've already seen, such as the subjects, year of publication, author, etc. But most useful is it will typically include an abstract. The abstract is a summary of the article. This is a really quick way to read a little bit about what the article is about and to determine whether this article is going to be useful to you for your research or not. It also tells you what database this article comes from. So this, data, this article comes from the database Academic Search Complete. That might be helpful when you're looking for other articles similar to this one. Then you'll also notice this blue folder, and I'll talk about that in a second. Now if you scroll down, you'll see that there is also this Plum X metrics. This is for some of the articles, not for all of them. But when you hover over it, it gives you a brief overview of the usage statistics of this article. So how many views for the full text, how many views for the abstract, how many links have been shared out, how many times it's been exported, and if any social media has been shared about this article. This isn't necessarily useful to you in your research, but it is interesting in possibly knowing how popular this article is and useful it was to other people. It might be a good source of information for you as well. So at this point, you wanna look through the titles, you wanna look at these abstracts, these summaries, to see if the article is useful to you or not, if it's an article that you want to use for your research or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this second one. And as I mentioned, there are two possible links, HTML full text and PDF. Let me show you what they both look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on HTML full text, and that will open up the article. And the reason it's called HTML full text is because it is embedded in the database shell. So that means right here I can see the full text of the article within the database. It's all listed as simple text. At the very bottom are any references or any notes. Now, if I look at the PDF version, over here on the left-hand side, I can click on PDF. I will still see the same article, but the difference is the PDF version shows the article as it was originally published in its journal. So the original published physical journal looked like this. This is what the article looked like. I tend to 
prefer the PDF version because I like to work with the original document as it was. But you can choose either method or either view. The content will be the same. The entire article will be there for you either way. And regardless of the version that you look at, your tools are also going to be the same for saving or exporting this article. Now, if you start to look through the article and notice that, yes, this is an article you want to keep and you want to use for your research, then you wanna pay attention to the folders over here on the right-hand side. The first one is a Google Drive feature. The Google Drive feature links the database with your Google Drive. It creates a folder for EBSCO and it will deposit the PDF version of your article into your Google Drive. I love Google Drive and I happen to like this feature, but for a different database, not this one in particular. For this particular database, I actually would recommend the email function instead. If you click on email, it will show you that the email is from us, the library at riohondo.edu. Here, you're going to type in your email address and then you type in a subject. This email is going to you. So whatever you wanna type in the subject is up to you. I typically recommend copying and pasting, if not the entire article, then the first few words of the article and pasting that in there. The comments again are up to you. You're the one who's gonna be receiving this article. You have a few options over here on the right hand side. You can include both the HTML full text and the PDF as a separate attachment in the email, or you can just select one or the other. HTML full text will mean that it is included in the body of the email, whereas a PDF is attached to the email. And then very useful here are a few options. The second option, citation format, is the most useful. You would select citation format and then you would select the citation style that you need for your assignment. I'm going to select MLA. This should be the most recent version of MLA. And that will be included in my email. And this is why I recommend the email format instead of the Google Drive format, because with the email format, I can include a citation in the email. So I'm gonna click send. And here's a confirmation of where it has been sent. And then I can click continue and double check my email. Now, when I open my email, I see here that it is from the library. Here is the subject line that I copied and pasted. Here is the PDF that I attached. When I open up the email, the first thing I see is the citation. It gives me a work cited. Again, please remember that these citations are only about 90 to 95% accurate. You will always need to do work with the citation, either double checking the accuracy or adjusting for formatting when you paste it into a final works cited page. Do not just copy paste. You always need to make adjustments, but 90% of the work is done for you here. And then you'll notice scrolling down because I selected both HTML and PDF. I have the entire article in the body of the email. And then at the very bottom is the attached PDF version of the article as well. And now this will stay in my email for as long as I need it to. And also from here, I could potentially with this PDF article, add it to my Google Drive if I wanted to as well. So this will stay in my email as long as I want it to and I can delete it anytime that I want. Going back to my article in EBSCO, uh, other options or other tools are of course to print the article. If you do decide to print, keep in mind that these articles tend to be long and so if you are paying for printing, it might be more economical to download or save the article instead. If you do decide to print, 
I recommend using this printing button instead of this one. This one tends to work better with your browser. This one is part of the database interface and sometimes doesn't work as well. The other option is to download the article and so you would use this download button here. When you download the article, you can download it to your computer or to a flash drive. Some other tools that you have here is a citation tool. You can click on this sheet right here and it will open up a citation format window. When you scroll down, you'll see all of the different citation styles that you can choose from. If I'm looking for MLA, which is here, I can again copy paste, but be careful copying and pasting from EBSCO because it does tend to carry over colors, background colors sometimes. And again, you will need to do the necessary formatting for it. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to go back to my result list over here in the left hand corner, click result list. Now looking back at our results list, one last thing I want to point out to you is this blue folder with the plus sign. So as you saw, I was able to email one article to myself. You can also download that article, save it to a flash drive or print it. Uh, but if you want to email multiple articles to yourself, this blue folder enables you to do that. So if you require more than one resource, but you currently don't have the time to look through all of these articles to see if they're viable for you, you might just be doing a quick scan or looking at the abstracts and you might want to save the articles later to be able to read and look over when you have more time. So this blue folder is great for that. If I click on this blue folder, it turns yellow. And what it does is it places it temporarily in a folder up here at the top. This is a temporary folder. I'm gonna go ahead and select a few other articles just as an example. They all turn yellow. And when I click on this temporary folder, you will see that all four articles that I selected are now here. Now from here, I can select all of the articles and I can email them as a group. I will get the same options as when I email one article individually. I type in my email address, I put in my subject, my comments, how I want the article sent, and to include the citation format style for the articles. Now it depends on how many articles you're selecting and also how large the files are. They may uh, all attach without problem or they may give you a link directing you back to the database to access the file if it is too large to send through email. So I generally recommend not selecting more than three articles at a time, uh, especially if you see that they are large articles, you know, 25 pages or more. But this is a great way to send more than one article to yourself at one time. Lastly, I want to show you what different searches in EBSCO will give you based on keywords. So you saw me start off with border wall without quotation marks, and then you saw me use the quotation marks as well. Then you saw me use filters to narrow down my results, but you can also use different word combinations in your search bars. I'm going to go ahead and clear all of my filters and I'm going back to my original search with just quotation marks, but I'm going to change my terms now. So instead of border wall, I'm going to try US Mexico border wall. And you see that someone else has already done this search. So I'm going to select that one 
and I'll hit enter or click search either way and see what kind of results that gives me. So this is without filters and I receive way less results than my initial search of border wall. I only have 2,500 results here and this is because my keyword search has become much more specific. So my keywords have essentially done the work of my filters. I have become much more specific with my location, with my phrase, what I'm looking for in my results. And that is why my results have become much fewer. I can try a combination of terms and see if that changes anything. I can try border wall with quotation marks using my and here. I can type in United States and then using my other and I can try Mexico and see if that changes my results at all if I get different articles. So I did get a few more than the 2000 in my last search. I got about a thousand more. I see some similar articles but some are new and different. And I can of course use my filters all over again to reduce my results to find more of what I'm looking for. But this is what I mean by trying different searches, trying different terms, trying different combinations of terms, looking at synonyms and related terms. You want to try as many different phrases as possible depending on your topic. You can also consider using Trump's wall. and see if that gives you something different. Only 200 with that restricted phrase and my two additional location keywords. So you'll see that you'll get a different combination of results depending on the words that you try. That's really important when you're doing your research. You don't wanna get stuck with just one phrase or keyword. You wanna try multiple varieties and combinations. And that's pretty much it for EBSCO. If you're interested in learning about ProQuest or one of the other databases, look to the other videos. Thank you.